Just as every child is unique, every child with an acquired brain injury is different. Some may have obvious physical disabilities. Many others have no obvious external signs of injury. An acquired brain injury can affect the way a child feels, behaves, thinks and speaks. It is most often a consequence of trauma or a neurological illness. This DVD focuses on children who are able to return to school after time in hospital and who are undergoing rehabilitation. We will explain some of these varied aspects of acquired brain injury by presenting the day-to-day -day challenges faced by such children. We discuss how the education and health services can cooperate to help these children and their families. These general principles can be applied to children who acquire brain injury for other reasons. The parents of a child with an acquired brain injury frequently feel anxious about the return to school. They've often experienced guilt about the child's injury and feelings of loss of control during the subsequent treatment. It's been a life-changing trauma for the whole family and now they're faced with the worry of a return to school. Parents are likely to struggle with the desire to protect a vulnerable child, but also the need to allow the return to a normal life. This can affect what parents expect of the school and may influence their interactions with teachers. Nick's first day back at school was a big day for us. I just really never thought we'd get to this point. Um, when the accident happened, um, I really did think that we'd lost him forever. Those first hours and days are quite a blur right now, but I, I do remember that I was, I was in the backyard and um, I was just doing some gardening. Um, and the phone call came through to say that um, Nick had had a bike accident and that he was, that he was unconscious. Um, I just never want to feel that terrified again. We met heaps of hospital staff and it was really hard to know who they were. Our minds were overloaded and we were in shock. Um, we met one of the P. Burke case managers early in our stay and they really helped to, you know, let us know what was happening mm. um, and who everybody was and what they did. And they were even able to give us some sort of idea about how long we might be there. Once a child is medically stable, more structured rehabilitation can begin with the Paediatric Brain Injury Rehabilitation Team, or PBIRT. This usually includes therapy sessions on the ward or in individual departments. Turn right into Water Street and turn left into High Street. I don't get it. That's okay mate, that was a long instruction. But you let me know that you didn't understand, which is great, okay? So we'll say it again, okay? At the candy shop... Each child will need different things from a rehabilitation program. The PBIRT and parents will work together to tailor a treatment plan for the child. The composition of teams vary. For example, the medical person involved may have specific rehabilitation training or be a neurologist or a general paediatrician. Welcome to our weekly meeting. We'll be doing this as long as Nick is in hospital with us. My name's Robert Smith. I'm uh, the paediatrician on the team. Uh, when he was in ICU, he was looked after a different set of doctors. The neurosurgeons, of course, were very involved. And they have now passed on care, and I'll be medically responsible for him while he's down on the ward. Uh, and I'll catch up with him as well from time to time once you get home. So. And you both know me, I'm Jenny, and I see you every day, and I've seen you in ICU. I guess um, I would be probably your consistent person that you see from our team. Generally, as a case manager, I tend to, to meet the child after they leave hospital. Um, I'm, I, I um, coordinate the care, introduce um, the family to the therapies that they may need. 
Um, just get them, um, reintroduce them back to school, meet with um, all the different um, community facilities that the child's involved with. So I'll, I'll meet along with our team members, um, the school, and it's really dependent on the child as to what um, significant issues have, has, have um, occurred due to their injury. Um, we tend to do an initial interview after discharge and with the family and the child. We look at um, the problems. A lot of um, children or a lot of families don't realise what significant problems they may be facing until they're back into a familiar surrounding, which is usually home, and there might be little subtle changes that they hadn't realised. Um, problems don't always exist straight up after an incident. It can happen a long time um, down the track. And so we generally keep contact and support the families. I'm my team. I'm the social worker on the team. As a social worker on the paediatric brain injury rehabilitation team, I offer formal counselling and support for children and families who are experienced acquired brain injury. Um, my role encompasses uh, facilitating counselling around issues of trauma, uh, grief and loss, adjustment and relationships. I guess my role is to support you and make sure that you have access to information uh, and that your time here is as comfortable as it can be under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. and I'm Catherine, I'm the physio on the team. I don't think I've met you yet, Greg. Um, I've got Nick I've been seeing Nick since he's been on the ward and um, like you're probably aware. The physio's role with a child in a brain injury is looking at their physical recovery and looking at maximising their physical ability um, and that would involve looking at things like their mobility, so initially moving around a bed and progressing to walking and other forms of mobility. Um, also looking at things like balance, strength, coordination and any other physical problems that may arise from the accident or injury. Hi, and I'm Katie, the Occupational Therapist. Okay, today I thought we'd have a little try of this little snowboard that I talked about yesterday because it was a little bit tricky for you to keep up nice and straight because your tummy muscles and your strength is still coming back around you and your tummy. Um, I thought we'd use this today. So we're going to try copying from the blackboard and see if this helps you to stay up nice and straight. Okay, we might think about using this at school just for a little while until you get a little bit of strength back. And we're still using our pencil grip, that's great. And really the goals of occupational therapy, the whole um, in intervention that we are aiming towards is to return a child back to their normal activities of daily living. So all the things that a child was able to do before their injury, we would like as, as our primary aim would be to help them, to get them back to that stage and return to the things they were able to do before. Hi Julie and Greg. Hi. I'm Wayne Levick, I'm the neuropsychologist with the team. Uh, I guess mine's pretty much a watching brief at the moment. When, when Nick's much closer to going back to school, I'll get down to a pretty detailed assessment looking at things like his attention, memory, processing speed, and also to some extent his schoolwork, reading, spelling, that sort of thing. And the, and the idea will be to do that as close as we can to his return to school so that we can give the school really up to date information on those things that are all pretty crucial. Neuropsychology is basically about the relationships between brain and behaviour and cognition. So that, that becomes a, a pretty important aspect of our assessment and management because we've got to look at what the child is able to do following the brain injury and we've got to then work out, well, to what extent might that have been a problem beforehand um, as opposed to being a, a result of the brain injury. I guess if you have questions along the way over the next few weeks about things like memory, attention, mm. behaviour to some extent, you know, just, just give me a yell, I'll come and have a talk with you about it. And I'm Matt, I'm the speech pathologist and I've been looking at um, Nick swallowing and as you know we've got him back on normal fluids and food and we're just monitoring his speech because um, it's a bit slurred, yeah, especially when he's tired, so we'll give him some exercises for his mouth. The role of a speech pathologist in the acute setting is primarily with swallowing, and that's making sure that they have they are safe for normal fluids and food. We also look at their speech skills and their oral motor skills, and that's looking at their the, the movements of their tongue, lips, etc. 
And we're also monitoring their communication skills and looking at the ability to understand the information that's been given to them, as well as, as well as the ability to be able to express what they're trying to say. And we liaise closely with the occupational therapist and the physiotherapist to monitor changes in their cognitive state. And as they become more alert, we, make, we, um, we monitor and make changes to their communication as appropriate. So, yeah. And I'll look at doing a more formalised assessment when it's closer to going back to school. So guys, that's a lot of information. <laughs> I, I mean, I imagine you've got a lot of questions. Mm. Um, so. When can we have him home? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few processes that we have to go through before we can get you home, and we need to make sure that... Hello, Julie. This is Jenny, the case manager. For many, but not all children, a case manager is assigned by the PBIRT to coordinate the rehabilitation program and the eventual return to home and school. The case manager is usually the first point of contact for the school and teachers. Um, we've also been talking to Greg and Julie and um, they're of the opinion that um, it would be better for Nick to just do three mornings a week. Oh, OK. That's a, yeah, just, just to begin with. Yeah, I'm Take actually thinking minutes. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Be fine, yeah. Okay, there are a number of ingredients in a successful transition plan. The, the first, uh, I guess, really critical ingredient is the formation of an individual learning support team. The membership of that team would consist of the parents, uh, the case manager from the brain injury unit. We would also uh, provide a school-based case manager and the other members of the team would be the classroom teacher and if there was a teacher's aid involved they may be included as well. So the next essential ingredient in the transition is the development of the transition plan. The transition plan would include or may include things like uh, visits to the hospital or to the child's home by the class teacher or by the child's school assigned case manager. Uh, it might include visits by the child uh, to the school during the recuperation period. Um, during that time the teacher will be re-establishing that sort of positive relationship with the child and uh, I guess getting to know him or her informally and again and sort of trying to ascertain the child's learning needs and how they might have changed. Uh, the next ingredient would be the development of that individual education plan and in that we're going to be looking at things like how we're going to need to adjust that child's curriculum, um, how we might cater for any change in the child's social needs or co social competencies. Uh, we might be looking at their particular health needs, whether they may have had changes in terms of their language needs and uh, also movement around the school. So all of those things would come into that plan. The case manager coordinates services and liaises with the parents, teachers and the school, as well as the other members of the rehabilitation team. Okay, have you got any problems or? No, that sounds terrific. You happy with that? Yeah. Okay, I think we might go next Monday. Okay. Mm. Return to school after acquired brain injury is an encouraging milestone on the road to recovery. The child is usually happy about this, but often also apprehensive. Everyone involved will have different expectations. Other students may assume everything will be exactly as it was before, and teachers may be expecting changes in educational performance. The needs of siblings attending the same school should also be considered. Physical injury is usually obvious, and students and teachers are likely to make allowances for such problems. However, the changes in a child with an acquired brain injury can be subtle and not instantly apparent. Each child will be different, but in the following section we illustrate some of the common problems experienced by children with acquired brain injury on return to school. We offer a few suggestions about helpful coping strategies. Children may have difficulty organising themselves in the classroom. Some of the following may help. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can everyone unpack their bags and get your books out ready for reading time? 
Minimize clutter. Color code books for different subjects. Use visual cues and timetables. Give step-by-step -step instructions. Children may have difficulties with attention and concentration in class. It may help to break down information into chunks. Provide regular breaks and rest periods. Alternate hard with easy tasks. Expect that more direction will be required. This may include physical prompts. Children may have difficulties remembering information. It may help to provide one instruction at a time and repeat where necessary, or have the child repeat it. Encourage the child to write down the instruction or provide written instructions. Pace verbal information. Okay, research time. Can everyone that was in the library yesterday go down to Mrs. Johnson in the computer lab, and everyone that was in the computer lab yesterday go to the library for a bit of research, okay? Thank you. Nick, you were in the computer lab yesterday? What are we researching, sir? Uh, hold on, I've got something for you. Here we are. Yeah, there are some good titles here. You can find out some information about Uluru. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. No problem. A child's safety may be compromised because of difficulties with coordination and balance. Teachers should be aware of this and provide support as appropriate. Provide extra time for moving around the school. Remove obstacles where possible. Provide supervision and facilitate use of any modifications that have been provided, such as handrails. After acquired brain injury, the return to sport is an important milestone for many children. Early reintegration into school sport is desirable. However, after severe acquired brain injury, some sports may carry unacceptable risk. Each child should be advised by their doctor. Coping with the consequences of acquired brain injury exposes children to challenges with self-esteem and adjustment. This is often related to the child's own perception of their difficulties. It is important to reinforce their strengths. Examples include encouraging positive self-talk and acknowledging their day-to-day -day successes. Encourage participation. Acknowledge that there are difficulties. Develop realistic strategies for improvement. Seek appropriate help from colleagues, such as the school counsellor. Following acquired brain injury, children may lack forethought and speak or act inappropriately. This can be intrusive and may socially isolate the child. It is helpful to intervene promptly to prevent escalation. Consistently provide clear feedback about what is acceptable. Avoid judgment. Redirect to more appropriate activity. Hey Nick, what's wrong? You won't let me play. Well, you know, did you ask if you could play? They won't let me anyway. Ah, oh, come on, how do you know that? You need a shave. Uh, well, um, uh, well, thank you, Nick. Uh, come on, let's uh, go to class. Following acquired brain injury, there may be a reduction in the speed of both thinking and movement. 
Children can be slower, particularly on more complicated tasks. Time pressure will make this worse, as will additional problems such as inattention and distractibility. Okay, it helps to reduce the speed when giving instructions. Yes. Provide more time for responses. Modify the workload on timed tasks. Poor stamina is common when children first return to school. This can fluctuate within the day or week. It may present as physical or mental fatigue and escalation of poor behaviour. Strategies include graded return to school, programming harder tasks earlier in the day, providing rest breaks. Children may even fall asleep in class. Rapid or extreme change of mood or behaviour can be common after an acquired brain injury. Children may overreact to trivial events. It may help to diffuse and redirect. Identify and avoid potential triggers. Provide rest breaks. Nick? What have we got? It's OK. On Saturday I work. That's good. What are you saying? On Saturday I... Good communication between children, teachers, parents and the case manager will help facilitate a smooth return to school. Mm. And I can be contacted any time. You've got my number. Um, yep. And um, if there's any problems at all, we can get together, have another meeting and we can sort the therapies to get some strategies to help you. Mm. Okay, year six, well done. You've all had a really great year. I'm very proud of you. Um, best of luck at high school next year and uh, enjoy your holidays. Class dismissed. Yeah! <laughs> It is important to plan ahead when a child moves from one educational setting to another. Some key transitions are infant school to primary school, primary school to secondary school, and moving from school into the workforce. Successful transition requires effective and timely communication. Great. Excellent. Thanks, Mr. Rundle. Thanks, Julie. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rundle. Thanks, Nick. Good job. From my perspective, the, the secret of a really successful outcome for the child is in the focus on a team approach. What we're doing is bringing all of those key people together and we're working together cooperatively, we're planning together, we're monitoring the situation together and we're, we're continually focusing on the child's needs. And we know from our experience that those needs are going to change from year to year and as the child matures. But if we continue to take that, that team approach, then um, we're certainly on the road to a very successful outcome.